As we move into our third hour of broadcast, let's look at the numbers. So we've had an insane amount of tweets coming through. We've had a lot of questions. I actually haven't been counting the questions, sorry guys. And a huge amount of social reach as well. So I'm super proud of you guys and thanks for tuning in and contributing to what we think is going to be an amazing, amazing 24 hours. Um, so it's only the beginning and we're so excited for all the great presentations and special guests ahead. For those that have just joined us at Global Marketing Day by SEMrush, uh, you're in for a plethora of great advice and practical tips. This is a 24-hour conference for marketing professionals by marketing professionals. I'm Harry Sanders, Director and Head of Search at Studio Hawk, which is Australia's largest dedicated SEO agency, uh, and I'll be your host for the next hour. There are two more sessions before I switch over and welcome our new host, Olga here now it's in our Sydney studios so next is Lou Rad um, sorry I've done this again uh, Radovcevic I want to say uh, APAC a Australian Pacific um, manager director at Hexagon since joining Hexagon she's revolutionized the way that the company approaches marketing establishing a revenue marketing engine that has already delivered significant growth congratulations Lou thank you and, and tapping into her experience and expanding into new markets uh, and transforming marketing teams, Lou will dive deep into how to turn small or regional marketing teams into revenue machines. I can't wait to hear about it. <laughs> I'd also love to introduce our two very special guests along with us today who will join us for the next 15 minutes after the presentation to discuss B2B team transformation. So we have Mike Rhodes, CEO and founder of Web Savvy and Agency Savvy, uh, and Andreas Jumla, CEO and co-founder of Longtail UX. So Mike Rhodes has been building and running campaigns for businesses and brands all over the world for more than a decade, and he's very well known in Australia for being one of Australia's best AdWords specialists. Uh, Andreas Jumla is also an ex-Googler and Dentsu Aegis network executive who's seen search marketing from all sides across Europe, US, and the Australian Pacific. Pacific region. Uh, so thank you both for being here and of course thank you to you as well Lou for giving this presentation. Without further ado, take it away. Perfect, thank you so much and thanks for the great introduction. So to kick off uh, the presentation and maybe a different pace to the previous one around influencer marketing, we're really now diving a lot deeper into the B2B marketing space um, and I'll talk about the whole concept of creating a revenue marketing engine with limited resources. So during the course of my career, I have worked for a significant number of B2B organizations where the marketing teams operated in a very similar environment. So there was demand for high growth overall from the business, uh, yet marketing was viewed as a cost center but expected to deliver ROI and to really show contribution to the bottom line. And there was a big focus on product, even though everyone was talking about the customer, the product was king. So in this kind of environment, um, the activities um, and kind of tactics that the marketing team delivered really struggled to, to show value to the business and ROI, um, and really struggling to prove value um, overall. So as a marketing team, we decided to, that it was time to really shake things up and, and change our whole approach to marketing and reinvent uh, how we were doing things. Uh, so in this environment, we looked at, well, what are some of the practices that are out there that we can adopt and adapt to really shift and, and demonstrate value to the business, but also to deliver and meet our customer needs profitably. So one of the practices that was taking the marketing world by storm um, and emerged a few years ago was a whole practice of revenue marketing. Now, revenue marketing comes in different shapes and forms. So some of the practices of revenue marketing originate from market automation, 
providers. Some of them come from various marketing agencies. Um, or there's also concepts that are known uh, such as growth hacking, which are really driven by fast-growing startups and their need to achieve double and tri triple-digit growth. In applying some of these revenue marketing practices, um, my team was able to transform how we did marketing and really achieve significant growth into the double digits. So it's not my intention to sell this whole idea of revenue marketing as a panacea overall, but hopefully present maybe a different or a complementary view um, of how to drive revenue within an organization um, and help you uh, transform your marketing team into revenue marketing engine. So with that long introduction, um, I'll move on and, and really start off with defining a, and finding a common platform for what revenue marketing is because there's so many different concepts out there. So to quote Paul Darcy from the Revenue of Marketing blog, um, he talks about revenue marketing as the development of repeatable prospecting programs where marketers are able to showcase predictable ROI and really link marketing plans to revenue objectives and outcomes. Now, another um, high, high authority on revenue marketing out of the U.S., the Pedowitz Group, expands this definition even further um, and talks about revenue marketing um, and how marketers can achieve this transformation um, as being through key three factors. So the first factor is around digital transformation, and it is not just digitally transforming the marketing function, the marketing team internally by adopting the different MarTech um, technologies available out there, but it's more so about evolving the buyer's journey and evolving the marketing channels um, through digital transformation to ensure that we are really understand the buyer and the process that they're going through in order to, again, deliver the right content and messaging um, at the right stage of the buyer journey. Suffice saying that, again, by no means is that buyer's journey linear um, in, in its process. The second component um, is really having a, a high focus on the customer and customer centricity, uh, which again goes beyond just developing customer personas um, and kind of understanding the insights based on personas, but really more in terms of bringing the voice of the customer within the marketing organization um, and really marketing being being, I guess, that custodian of the voice of the customer and bringing those insights into the strategies um, and decision-making process, not just within marketing, but broader into the sales organization, into product, um, and into other parts of the overall business. Um, and also revisiting the whole, uh, I guess, segmentation uh, approach uh, within marketing because, as we know, businesses and industries are transforming very quickly these days, so it's really important to understand the buying committees, especially in the B2B space, and the emergence of some of the roles um, and for example in the industry that I operate in there's the emergence of the CDO or chief digital officer who is really driving the overall strategy for for the business um, in terms of the technologies that the business is buying and finally last but not least and this is really critical is adopting a revenue mentality um, and that uh, reflects on really marketing starting to think and behave um, and then think in terms of the the sales organization so marketing thinking in terms of revenue contribution in terms of ROI rather than just being very tactically focused. So reflecting on this, um, we need to look at, well, what is this overall state of revenue marketing when it comes to especially B2B organizations? Um, and there are a number of research studies available out there that really point to the overall state um, of, of marketing organizations. So I think there's a research that's put out by Salesforce, also one that I've been following every year by um, Australian Marketing Institute. Um, and some of the stats in the slide here really indicate that overall marketers in the Asia Pac region are quite immature. Um, or evolving in their maturity when it comes to revenue marketing. So we can see that 17% clearly communicate ROI, 32% have achieved overall their marketing objectives, 50% of mar 53% of marketing is still viewed as a support function, and 32% of marketers have a documented lead gen uh, strategy and agreed lead definition wow. between the sales and marketing organization. So these factors are really staggering, again, point to a real need for marketers to transform um, the organization and be a lot more closely aligned uh, with sales. Um, so when we talk about transformation of marketing organizations, I think it's really important to note that obviously this transformation cannot happen in isolation. So marketing cannot operate separate to the sales organization or product or other teams. So when we're looking at any sort of marketing transformation, um, it really needs to be a holistic approach across the sales and marketing teams. So one of the useful tools um, that, that I've been using and I found really useful is, um, is this whole concept of a revenue marketing maturity framework. 
Um, and this maturity framework really showcases how a marketing team uh, transforms um, and evolves from a, a very immature marketing operation from a revenue perspective to a more sophisticated uh, marketing operation from, from stages such as crawl, walk, run, and leap. So during the crawl stage, this is a very traditional um, kind of approach and, and, and format for marketing where there's little data collection, there's no real process or structures within the marketing operation, there may not even be a marketing manager, marketing director leading the marketing team, there are a few processes, uh, little alignment with sales, and there's a big focus on branding um, and also on advertising. So the reporting metrics are very, very, very basic here, um, and they're based on cost and number of activities. So moving on to the walk stage, um, again, this is where the marketing organization starts to evolve. So there is a marketing plan in place, but the plan may not be aligned to business objectives or to sales targets. Uh, customer data is collected relatively. There's some knowledge of personas. Um, again, there's a serum in place, but it's not used as a mandate by the sales organization. Um, and there's also a market automation tool or email marketing tool in place, but it's purely used for single drop emails or spam. Um, so marketing reporting is really, again, quite basic here, and it's based on just the number of leads provided to sales. So uh, and the, during the third stage, which is the more evolved stage, uh, run stage, so there's obviously marketing strategies um, and plans that are aligned to overall business objectives. So there are quarterly campaigns in place, and role in, roles and responsibilities are well defined. So sales and marketing have a revenue type of relationship where they speak the same language in terms of um, the ROI and the impact to the business. And there's also multi, obviously multi-channel integrated campaigns in place. So the, from a reporting and metrics perspective, um, this is based on the percentage and number of leads provided to sales. And finally, during the most advanced stage, which is the leap stage, and this is where I think the lucky kind of few marketing organizations find themselves that are quite well resourced and have sophisticated teams that are really well aligned with sales. Um, there's a CMO at, at the helm and the CMO has a seat at the leadership table. Um, and this stage is really marked by having in place what we call, again, the repeatable prospecting programs. Um, and also there's a single view of the customer. So from a reporting or metrics side of things, um, obviously marketing here really speaks the language of revenue, talks about customer life cycle, retention, churn rates and conversion rates and so on. So um, again, in reviewing this, I'm sure that you know, each one of the attendees of this um, uh, global event can find themselves in terms of where their organization is from a maturity perspective. Um, but also obviously there's hope and um, it's not impossible to make the transformation. Um, and what's required is really putting in place a holistic marketing transformation program. So in this next section, um, I'll showcase um, a case study of a global tech company and of a transformation program that took place a couple of years ago um, and really showcasing again the practical application um, of some of these uh, changes um, and again the impact and the results and the lessons learned. So this particular organization really kicked off at a, at a very immature um, stage, so at the crawl stage. Um, and um, this was really driven by, um, again, the company not seeing a lot of value in marketing and really marketing just being a service provider uh, to the overall organization. Um, and while times were good, um, obviously there was high growth w within the team, so no real need to to have any other expectations for marketing. There was limited alignment with sales um, and marketing was purely utilized to run events, maybe press releases and create brochures for the overall uh, organization. However, times changed um, and growth plateaued um, and finally the business woke up to the need to actually uh, transform the market organization um, as well as the sales organization to then really try to uh, reap the benefits um, and, and continue on this growth, uh, growth path and growth trajectory. Um, so, so the graph here outlines really some of the, I guess, 10 elements of the transformation program that were put, in, uh, put into place and that really drove this transformation over um, an 18 month period. Um, so I'll just highlight some of the things that were put in place across the 10 different elements. So from a, um, a strategic orientation perspective, um, this is really where the marketing planning and marketing strategies were aligned to the overall business plans and aligned overall to the sales plans and sales objectives. Um, so they were 
quarterly campaigns put in place um, that, are, again, aligned and really drove um, and, and showcased how the marketing aligns with what the business requirements are. Um, so there was segmentation was reviewed, um, and again, similar in line with the definition that I, I gave previously. So really revisiting the segmentation, identifying what are the trends out there in market and how, how the marketing team and sales teams redefined overall their segmentation, ensuring that there's overall alignment across the two functions. People and skills, um, so this was a really, really important one uh, from a transformation perspective in terms of looking in, well, what sort of market organization um, needs to be put in place to drive the growth and then making sure that, um, for example, skills matrices were put in place um, as well as review of the current team in place and, and where the skill gaps and what, what are the new hires that need to be made within the market organization, but also broader beyond marketing within sales as well. Job design, now this is a quite an interesting one and which is um, often overlooked, especially when it comes to various transformation programs. So job design can basically make or break an organization um, and it really boils down to um, kind of people performing or underperforming in their roles um, and potentially actually people I guess an employee's marketer is being set up to fail from the get-go because the original job design did not meet the relevant business objectives. So this is a really critical one as part of any transformation is to actually revisit the whole job design of the marketing team. Budget, um, again, an important one. Um, and again, budgeting is something that's kind of managed as BAU year on year. So again, really critical to revisit the whole budgeting strategy and to make sure that um, funds are being invested into where, um, again, they can have the most impact. Process, um, again, process, making sure that the process and the process were mapped out and also the introduction of agile practices within marketing, which kind of stops some of that frenzied approach to um, delivering on, on programs. Um, technology, again, evolving the, the MarTech stack with the tech stack beyond just the marketing organization and making sure that there's more sophisticated tools in place so that, again, marketing can, can drive more insights um, into the organization. Culture, uh, again, a really critical one. So developing um, and, and I guess promoting a culture of revenue marketing and of growth. So really critical that, again, the marketing team really innovates and has almost uh, an entrepreneurial type of mentality. So it's important to test and learn rather than just repeat the same thing year on year. Uh, communication, uh, again, another important one, and communication is similar to job design, quite often overlooked in any sort of transformation program, um, and that goes beyond communication within the marketing team, but communication with sales, with customers, with suppliers, so making sure that the channels and lines of communication are open and that the right insights and information is coming uh, w within the market organization and that there is activities put in place and action points to address any challenges that come up. Reporting, uh, I probably don't need to talk about reporting a lot because again, we've addressed reporting as part of the maturity framework, but it is putting in place again, metrics that are relevant for the business and that the business needs to know. So, I mean, does the CM CEO really care about click-through rates? Probably not. Um, so again, putting the right metrics in place. Um, and then again, revenue, revenue sort of mentality. So, just quickly to summarize, so here are some of the results um, that came out of the transformation program over the past um, 18 months for, for this organization. Um, so again, starting from a point where maybe just the activities were measured and nothing else, are very tactical. So again, there's some kind of really tangible metrics that have been put in place. Um, and what are some of the lessons learned? And these are really important. So first of all, marketing is really part of everyone's role from the C-level, uh, from the CEO top down. So everyone impacts the customer experience and drives revenue. So creating the revenue marketing engine is a major change management and transformation program. And it takes time, it can take six months, 12 months, even over a year. So it's definitely not for the faint hearted and it's really critical to get um, sea level buy-in. Otherwise without that, it's, it's not a worth undertaking the exercise. Uh, it's really important to have a holistic view of the organization across the 10 elements that I mentioned. So a lot of the transformation programs talk about people, process, and technology, but these elements have really been proven to, again, move the dial and, and, and drive significant change. Uh, getting the right people in place is critical, and also marketing needing to adopt um, a sales mentality and really think in terms of contribution to bottom line. So I guess in wrapping up, um, also have, 
I guess some content that's available if anyone's interested. So reaching out through the organizers around a, a B2B marketing playbook, an ebook that has a lot more information uh, on this topic. So it was yeah very limited, 15 minutes of time to present a, quite a, a comprehensive um, um, topic. So if anyone again would like to uh, would get a hold of this feel free to, um, again, reach out to me via LinkedIn. Very happy to share insights and, and take the conversation further. So I guess yeah, without further ado, I'd um, love to think what the esteemed panel thinks mm. about uh, the whole process of revenue marketing and yeah. also the, the people out there. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Lou, for sharing your expertise firstly on, on how to run and how to turn a small, medium business teams into revenue engines. Uh, such helpful insights for our global marketing day audience. Um, look, as we jump into questions, and your, add yours to the mix at globalmarketingday.com uh, or use the hashtag globalmarketingday. Uh, we've got heaps, but keep them coming. We love them. We've had over 600 tweets so far and over 3,000 people tune in live. So it's been amazing so far. We're really excited. Now, Andres, I've got a question for you. Um, how do we reduce the pressure on your teams as you try to transform them to deliver on business expectations? Well, first of all, I just thought this was so insightful and I wish uh, I would have read that or read your book like a few years ago because that's really the transformation I, I, we saw in our business and also what we had to do for B2B marketing ourselves. Um, sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> sorry, how do you reduce that pressure on the team as you transform them to deliver on the business's expectations? I think the first thing is really, you mentioned that several times, is just measuring. Like mm. what are the KPIs and how do you actually measure and, and then and what are your targets and then to actually align and through the different... Uh, uh, business departments, so sales and marketing. I think that's probably the first thing. Absolutely. Um, and Mike, I know, I know you, and specifically at Web Savvy, have gone through some insane growth, right? And you've yeah. done phenomenally well. What are some of the teething pains that you've discovered during times of transformation? Oh gosh, um, I think a too myopic a, a, a focus on maybe the wrong metrics at times. Mm. Wanting stuff to happen really, really fast. Mm. I think Lou did a really good job of making that sea level understand this may take a little bit of a t time, especially if we're crawling at the moment. I mean, we need to get to run as quickly as possible in this day and age. If you're not running now, you really need to be very, very soon. Mm. But knowing that it will take a bit of a time, change management is uh, a process. Absolutely. And, and at WebCV, you're working with some amazing, extraordinary organizations mm. that also have teams. What are you seeing from an outside perspective in that they're doing to, to cope with that growth that you're producing? Well, I think focusing on the right numbers, um, having that buy-in from the top. And I love the fact that you're talking about experience, the customer experience. You know, it's not using marketing or advertising to fix a crappy product. Mm. Um, you know, the tax that many businesses pay for not having a good product, but understanding that it is in everything and everybody in the business has to focus on it. Absolutely. I've never quite thought of it that way. So that's quite, a, <laughs> quite an excellent explanation. Uh, Andres, um, you come at it from a different perspective at Longtail UX. Can you talk a little bit about what it's been like in your growth? So just in, internally for us as a business, uh, we probably completely underestimated what marketing actually needs to do or that marketing is actually required. So my background, I worked at Google and it's the old mantra, build a great product and they will come, right? Um, doesn't always happen. Mm. Oh, and um, so then the next step was for us, oh, we need sales. So then we had sales, right? Where, where do they get the leads from? Oh, we just buy leads or we just somehow make that work. Until we actually got to the stage where we realized we really need to uh, like attack the strategically and of course um, the topic is like you don't have you have limited budgets you have a you're small company you, you don't immediately have a CMO and all the perfect functions and everything um, so how do you actually s scale that with a limited budget um, outsourcing is always a great idea but then you actually lose complete control so you almost have to have like a central function that's what we, we realized you need to have the CMO type person whether you call him or him or her CMO is a different story mm -hmm. but just to have the strategy in house but and and then really put all these things in place and um, yeah we were crawling probably until probably three years ago and then went through the stages really really fast because we had to yeah um, no yeah. it is so interesting to, to yeah. hear and um, someone I know who's, who's going to be on this conference later in uh, another time zone another continent but Mike who I met in Portugal mm. um, he talks about about Google and their growth and the build a great product and they will come but actually Larry and Sergi back when back Mike 
been in the industry for a while, were at Ultra Vista trade shows with the Google banner, right? And everyone there would look at them and go, yeah, good luck with that, guys. And here we are today. So, you know, there's always a little bit behind the scenes that we don't talk about, we don't hear about. I'm not, I don't even know if that story's allowed to be shared, but th there you guys have it. You heard it here first. Um, look, going back to you, Mike, we've talked a lot about growth and the different ways of growing and all sorts of things around how do we how do we go from that crawl to run yeah what are the, what's what's the best thing you think you've done to support that growth well, it would be very easy at this point to dive into uh, and roll off a list of tactics, but I think mm. the best thing is really what Lou was talking about, of, of coming up and looking at it from a much more strategic point of mm. view. What does the business actually want? You know, Our clients want us to talk in terms of revenue and ROI. They don't want to talk about click-through rate and quality mm. scores and, and little things that don't show up on the P&L. So starting with a plan and understanding who's going to be involved with that, how that rolls out, how much time time it might take mm. it doesn't need to be huge resources i'd love i'd love it if more b2b's talked about growth hacking mm. that'd be mm. wonderful mm. and squeezing more out of those limited resources yeah absolutely and and you know work with the right partners and the right people obviously to, to make sure that those results are coming through yeah um andreas again coming back to to you and the the growth that you guys have had um how how have you found um I guess with the users that you're working with, obviously you might be attracting, Mike might be talking about clients, but you would be talking about users. What metrics are they looking for um, in a tool? So it's, it's, we're a B2B service mm. company, so it's still mainly businesses, mm. right? Um, and obviously within there you have users or mm. you, have, you have the individual people. Um, well, the first thing, like you have to understand what they actually, how do they measure success? Mm. And then, so we're, we're in search, right? So it's, it's, it's a very simple channel in some way because everything is measurable, at least on the paid side, not mm. on the organic side. Mm. Um, but um, so so it's it's really figuring out like it's one way to say okay this is how we do it and this is amazing like you really have to understand how they measure success and that's probably the same with change management like what is success for for the people you actually work with and, and you you're trying to mm. to help well that's mm. the first thing so mm. it's all about running <laughs> it's all about running yes. how can we run <laughs> now that's that's excellent and is there anything that that either of you guys would like to add to that discussion well, just maybe just actually the area where we work, I think search is actually gives you so much data um, where first of all, you actually can understand how do people talk about your product, um, whether there's, whether you're B2B sales or B2C, it doesn't matter because uh, search engines for most of the, of, of, of the companies are actually relevant, like search traffic. And search term reports are probably the most underestimated um, uh, tool really to just figure out how, how do actually your users, your B2B customers or B2C customers actually, how do they search for your services? That's probably the first thing actually to then understand and, then, and, and they actually want them. So that's actually not, not your, your typical market where you try to find your audience and you can, mm. they're actually there, right? Mm. Um, th that's probably still one of the most important things. And, but yeah. then really connect that to your marketing team as well. I think mm. I've, I've, we see too many clients, uh, well not clients, but also prospects or in general where you have digital and then you have marketing as like, well, the strategy, strategy and everything. But once you align that much better, you actually look at, uh, there's so much data out there and then you connect that to your strategy and how you talk about your product. Yeah. I think that's really the different departments like above the line and digital talk Working together, mm. I guess that is really very important for. Yeah, it's um, really mm. that you know digital marketing versus marketing in the digital world. Yeah, it is having that sort of again mindset, revenue mindset, data mindset, digital mindset, yeah. really critical. Yeah. Absolutely. And Mike, you would be working with a lot of these different departments. What, what's your take on it? Well, I'm going to go a bit contrary, actually. Oh, I love it. Because I'm a massive data geek, but mm. I'm going to remind us all that not everything that can be measured matters and not everything mm. that matters can be measured. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes you've got to go out on a limb and trust your gut, get as much data as you can, but back yourself in and go do something even if it can't be measured. Absolutely. Things like reputation and the way brands are perceived. Absolutely. and Even just during growth, we've seen a lot of great companies that have great P&Ls and great uh, everything on paper, but the things that aren't on paper are the things that cost them. So mm -hmm. great point, Mike, as well. It's, it's awesome to see that different perspective. 
Look, absolutely fantastic session, guys. Really enjoyed having you all on today. And, you know, I want to thank you experts in the Sydney studio today. So, Lou Radikic, I want to yes. say I did that better. Thank you very much. much uh, APAC director, uh, APAC director. marketing director at Hexagon. Uh, Mike Rhodes, CEO and founder of Web Savvy and Agency Savvy. And, of course, Andreas Jumla, CEO and co founder of Longtail UX. So, keep the conversation going on social media, use the hashtag Global Marketing Day to discuss how you've navigated transformation in your company. would love to hear about it. There are so many different ways and you never know who you'll find by engaging in these Twitter threads. Uh, I'm always surprised uh, at what you can find come out of them. So look, stay tuned. We've got some exciting presentations coming up and I look forward to seeing and chatting to you soon.